All right, now we have an understanding of just static charge and you know these forces that are pent up. Now we're going to release these charges and watch them move. Think about a rubber band. You stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. You're building up that char or that force, that um, elastic potential energy, that force that's built up in there. And now you release that one end. You're going to see a change in motion because there's a force there. The same thing is going to apply here. With that static charge, with static electricity, you have this force, a certain amount of potential energy building up, building up, building up, and you really allow that charge now to move or give it away to move, they're going to move. You're going to have a change in motion and acceleration, and that's what you think about with electricity. Um, some of the key things that we're going to be talking about, again, are things that you probably have heard at least before. Volts. You've all probably talked about like a 9-volt battery before. Many you talk about charging things up, you know, your computers are notoriously dead from too much gaming and forgetting to charge them. You have a breakdown when your phone doesn't have a charge, you gladly plug it into a wall. You know, and so we'll talk about voltage, we'll talk about current, we'll talk about watts a little bit, or like a 60 watt light bulb, what does that mean? And so we'll look at all those things and start an event, maybe not today, but in the near future, we'll get into start building a little bit of circuitry and maybe, you know, what's happening when you turn that light switch on? What's happening in a breaker box or a fuse? When you're having a holiday get together and you have too many crock pots all hooked up in the kitchen and the power goes out, you know, what's going on there and why are the, what's going on? So we'll talk about all those things. So electric current, electricity. You know, static electricity is this thing that's just built up, pent up. It's like a stretched rubber band. You know, electric, or when you think about electricity, it's when things are actually flowing and moving. You're going to see me draw an analogy to water quite a bit, and I'll explain that as we go. All right, so some of the key things, got a little colorful for you here. Uh, your targets, your objectives, your learning targets here. Explain the relationship between voltage, resistance, and current. Uh, that's one of the big things with electricity is looking at how those three play into, into account. Uh, predict energy transformation. Okay, so are we going from electrical to heat for your toaster oven? Are we going electrical to mechanical for a fan moving? Are we going uh, electrical to light for a light bulb? And we're going to talk about series and parallel circuits. Uh, the best analogy for that is Christmas lights. Some Christmas lights, the older ones, if one light bulb goes out, the entire strand goes out. And the newer ones, maybe only a few go out if any other ones go out. Another analogy or example of that is in your house. If you turn off a light, not all the lights in the entire house go out. And so there's a difference between an advantage, disadvantage for series and parallel. And we'll just start getting into that. You'll explore more of that next week when you do a, a circuit building lab. So static electricity, static electricity, again, is that buildup of charge, okay, and it, it, it can discharge, that's your shock, but most of the time we're just talking about the buildup of a net charge, a total charge on an object, and it's not moving or really flowing. Electric current is the flow of that charge, okay. If you think of static electricity, that's the water behind the faucet without it being turned on. It's ready to go, it has a certain amount of potential energy ready to push. And as soon as you open the floodgates, you're going to see the flow of water. You now have electricity or electric current. When you see this word current, what I want you to think about is if I talked about the current in a river, what would you think about? Or the current out in the ocean? You're going to think about water flowing at a rate or a relatively faster rate. If you get caught in the current of a river, it's going to take you down river. You're going to go with it. And it's the same thing, you know, current is the flow. You know, if you think of current in a river, you think of flow of water. With electrical current, we're just thinking of the flow of charge. All right, just a review uh, with static electricity, you had three ways that we talked about charging. We can rub, 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 rip those electrons off. You have physical contact. 
Okay, and you rip in the charges off and having a buildup of charge on one on the other. Remember, opposites attract, like charges repel. So here you would see like charges. They both have the same charge, they're repelling. Here they're attracted, so you would have an opposite charge on the hair versus the balloon. Induction, we talked about giving it away to get away. It's You start to polarize it. You put a negative object close to a positive. Positives are attracted towards it. You give the electrons or the negative charges away to get away, and you remove them, and now I have permanently charged objects. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk about voltage to start. The most common way you think about voltage is in it, you know, you hear it as a nine volt battery. Okay. Voltage, I want you to think about pressure. Okay, it's the pressure that's building up, getting those charges ready to flow. Okay. If you have, you think of your bathroom faucet or your household faucets, there's a certain amount of pressure built up. You know, if you live in the city, you probably have a little higher pressure. As soon as you open that floodgate, it allows it to go. Okay. Another way to think about it is you have your garden hose with the attachment, the sprayer on it. You have the sprayer closed, you have that build up pressure in the hose. As soon as you give it away to release, it's going to flow. That build up of pressure before it flows, that potential energy, stored energy, is voltage. I want you to think about it as a water tower, okay? You have a water tower like we have at school right outside by the stadium. You have a certain height, which gives it a certain amount of pressure, a certain amount of potential energy. Voltage on, a, say, a battery is the same thing. It's giving it a certain amount of pressure. It's like the water up here. And as soon as you give it a way to go, what's going to happen to this water? It's going to flow downhill because of gravity. Water always goes downhill. So think of pressure, voltage. Think of a water tower. Your voltage source is how much pressure is behind those charges trying to get them to flow. Here you can see a little better example since I'm terrible at art. You got the water tower, you a certain amount of height on that water tower, giving it pressure at the bottom. That's analogous, that's our analogy to voltage, okay? It's the amount of potential energy that's stored up, ready for that charge to get converted. You think back to our pendulum example of pe uh, potential kinetic energy, you raise that pendulum up a certain distance, a certain height, you're giving a certain amount of potential energy. We're doing the same thing with voltage, okay? A nine volt versus 12 volt versus 24 volt. It's just, I'm having a certain, I'm raising it higher and higher and getting it ready and having more pressure behind that charge ready for it to start flowing once I open the floodgates. Okay. Ways to create it, uh, a variety of ways, but the three kind of main ways that we talk about in our everyday life is your chemical cells, is your batteries. So you have a chemical reaction in those batteries that create a certain amount of pressure for that charge to flow. When you charge your phone or your uh, computer battery, you're in essence resetting and allowing that, that chemical reaction to take place again. Generators, we'll talk about those more when we get to magnetism, but your power in your house, most of them are created by some form of a generator. Or you have solar cells, you have solar power, but all those are creating a certain amount of pressure, a certain amount of potential energy for those charges to be able to flow. Again, think of the water tower. Now, in your house, once you hook up plumbing and once you open up the valve, what happens? The water starts to flow. Without those piping and without everything being connected, you're not going to have water flow. The wires in your house, in your computer, in your computer, whatever it might be, are those pipes. And when you hit the button or you turn it on, you have opened up the faucet, as our analogy goes, and that charge can now start to flow. Then that is current. Okay, that is current. And those charges are going to get from one terminal to the next. Because remember, like charges don't like to be next to each other, each other. So the negatives have a path to get out of the way and find their buddies over on the positive terminal. 
Now, why can't they jump in here inside this battery? There's too much resistance. It's too hard to get there. It's not possible. Okay, there's a big roadblock in here if you think about it that way. So they take the easiest path and get back to the other terminal where they're attracted to their opposite buddies. But current, think of the flow of a current on a river. Current in electrical world is the flow of charge. It's not water. It's through those pipes, the wires. All right. Now, current in a circuit or in anything is a flow of charge, and it is measured in amps, amperes, okay, amps for short. And it is literally telling you the flow rate. Uh, if you take physics with me, we'll get into that a little more, but it's actually how much charge per second is flowing. So 5 amps is 5 coulombs worth of charge flowing per second. Again, another analogy, you go into water, think of if you look at the flow rate, like if you go buy a new a shower head, you'll see this rating, GMP, or GPM, sorry, gallons per minute. It's telling you how many gallons per minute are going to flow out of that hose or out of that faucet head. Amps is telling you how much charge per second is flowing. So again, it's just talking about the flow rate. Current and flow. There are things that are going to affect it. One of it is, you know, how much pressure you have behind it, the voltage. Okay, If you have more pressure in your house, you're going to have a higher flow rate out your faucets or out your hose. Also, the opening. You think of a fire hose versus a garden hose, you're going to have a bigger flow rate out of that fire hose than you are that garden hose. And so there are things that are going to affect that current or that flow rate. That thing that is going to affect the flow rate is called resistance. Okay. Now, again, these are just kind of your analogies. We're talking about, you know, trying to equate that to the understanding of how water flows. Think of resistance of the size of the hose or how many kinks you have in the hose. If you put a kink in the hose, what's going to happen to it? The flow rate's going to slow down or, and or stop. So resistance, think about it as friction is slowing, it's the speed bumps for those charges. It's going to slow them down. So right now, the three main things that we have when we talk about circuitry or any kind of electricity is voltage. Again, that's that stored up potential energy. That's the pressure behind it. That's the water tower height. Okay, you have current. Think of current on a river. That's the flow rate. And now I have something called resistance. And that's anything that's going to slow it down. So think of it as kind of friction. Okay, Think of it as kinks in the hose. Voltage is measured in volts. Current is measured in amps. And resistance is going to be measured in something called ohms. And it has a goofy symbol, omega, Greek letter omega. All right, if I were you, I would take a minute, and you, you're not turning these in, but pause it, answer these questions, uh, and look back if you need to, okay? I am going to be attaching a Google form that you're going to be using any of these notes to help answer the questions, but this, I'll give these answers here after you pause it, please. All right, voltage, okay? Think about it as the stored up energy. Think about it as the pressure ready to flow. It's the amount of stored up energy. It's analogous to the height of the water tower. That's our analogy. How is it generated? The three main ways I want you to be aware of, really is the most common way around anymore, is you think about battery voltage, uh, wall voltage, which is from the generators at the power plants, and you also have uh, photovoltaic cells or solar power creating that voltage. 
current. If you just see this word, you probably hopefully might think of the on a river and that's the flow of water. So this is the flow rate of charge. Okay, and again, it's the amount of charge that's flowing by you per second, but more we use amps. Our analogy would be gallons per minute when you're talking about water. So resistance, the tendency for a material to oppose the flow of electrons. Again, think of it as kinks in the hose. Think about it, things that are going to slow it down. Think about it as friction. Now, sometimes you want a lot of friction because you want heat. You want a lot of resistance because you want it to get hot and produce light. Here you can see the filament in an incandescent light bulb has a lot of resistance, so much so that it creates so much heat that those metal filaments light up and produce the light. In your toaster ovens, in, your, uh, in a heater, they're going to have a lot of resistance in them because that's what they're trying to get out of. So it just depends. That's also why your computers have so many fans on them and produce so much heat and get so hot. Again, you can see it is measured in the units of ohms, and there you see that, the symbol omega. Things that will affect it, again, if you equate it to water, you're thinking about the size of the hose or the length of the hose. You're thinking of maybe putting some kinks in it that are going to slow it down. Um, Things that are going to affect it from a pure electrical standpoint is the length. The longer you have to go, the greater the friction, the greater the more resistance you're going to have. So that's why if you have long runs in your home of electricity or you look at the power lines that are out on the road or up to your house, they're a lot bigger diameter than the wiring inside your computer. They'll also create a so that you get a bigger diameter to offset that length. Material, whether it's aluminum, copper, gold, it's going to affect it because certain things are better conductors and temperature will also have a play. All right. Now, how are they all linked? How are they all linked? That is Ohm's law. Okay. Ohm's law. If you think back to Newtonian physics, we had this equation F equals MA that everything came back to with Ohm's law. Ohm's law is kind of the quintessential our equation when we talk about electricity, and it is V equals IR, voltage equals current times the resistance. Okay, this is how they are all linked. And this is kind of the circuitry electrical equation. Those of you like the handy dandy magic triangle, you got V on the top, I and R down here. Again, cover up what you want to find and you can find the missing part. All right, series circuits. So let's just talk briefly about series and parallel. Series, there, everything is lined up. In a circuit, you have to have things the two terminals of your voltage source, or in this case of a battery, connected. In this case, boom, connects to the positive, the lights turn on. If I'm a little charged, I have to go through every single one of these batteries, depositing an energy to get back to the other terminal. I deposit a little energy here, a little energy here, a little energy here, a little energy here, until I'm all spent by the time I get back to the battery to get recharged. Now, understand that you have to be able to get back to the battery. Okay, the, this symbol right here where you see a short line, big line, that's a symbol for a battery, positive negative terminal. This is a, a light bulb. This is what we call a switch. Now, as I come around here and I'm trying to get to the other side of my terminal, I can deposit a little energy here. I come back, uh-oh, the draw bridge is open. I can't get to the other side, so guess what? I'm not going to flow. I'm not going to leave. I know the road is broke. I'm not leaving my terminal. No light bulb is going to turn on. I'm not even going to try to make it this way because I know I can't get any further. So the charges don't leave because of this, what we call open switch. Okay. So you have to have a completed path for the charge to flow. And so you have, in this case, 
what you have is an open switch. Okay, that's what you see right here. Sometimes you'll see two circles here. Okay, this would be called an open switch. This would be called a closed switch. Okay, open and closed. I like to think of a drawbridge. The drawbridge is open. No cars are going to pass through. No charge can flow. The circuit's not going to turn on. When your light switch is off on the wall, this is what is occurring. When you flip the switch, you close that drawbridge. The cars can now travel. The charges can now go. Okay. But a series circuit, there is one path and one path only. No detours. current okay, is going to be the same at all the time. The resistors add up because think about them as speed bumps. I have to get slowed down every single time I go through these. Okay. Uh, next lesson, I'll talk to you a little more about what's happening here. But again, if you have to go over every speed bump, you're going to go slower and slower and slower. You're going to slow down. You're going to deposit a little energy here, a little energy here. If you add some more light bulbs, you got to deposit a little energy there. So as you look in lab neck coming up here, you'll see that the dimness, because the current's going to go down, you're going to see the dimness, it's the lights, the more lights you add, the dimmer it gets, because you only have so much energy to deposit each way. A parallel circuit, you have multiple paths. Think about it on this way. Think about grocery stores, okay? The more lanes that are open, the quicker you're going to get through because you can kind of divide up where you want to go. So if you have five lanes open, you, you can go to any of those lanes and it's going to get people in there and through there faster, as opposed to having one lane and everybody having to go through it. Now, if you have five lanes open at the grocery store, you're not going through every lane, are you? No, you're going to go through one and then leave. That's the same thing that's true here. So if I'm this charge, I could either go through this light bulb to get back to the positive terminal, or I could say, eh, I want to go through this lane and then go back. So I'm either going to go through the first light bulb or the second bulb. I'm either going to go through lane one checkout or lane two checkout, not both of them. I'm not going to pay twice. So now if one of these light bulbs breaks, that's like having an open switch. I don't have to go through that one. I have a detour. I have an alternative route that I can go. And, and so this light bulb will stay on. So this is like the newer Christmas lights that if one goes out, the other ones can still stay on. Series where if one goes out, forget it. Every single one of them is go out because there is no detour. It's a one lane road. There's one lane and you can't get around. So that's one of the main advantages of being parallel. We'll stop here for today for this lesson. We'll talk more about fuses and circuit breakers as we go forward. Um, again, there is going to be a Google form that's going to be coming out to you that is going to use a lot of these resources in these uh, lessons this week. Again, treat it just like a check your understanding and a little open note check just to use it, use your resources, use your notes, use these videos to answer those questions. I'm just checking for your understanding of the basics before we go further.